Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to talk all about encoding or dictation. Now I have made quite a few phonics and phonemic awareness related videos. They're actually all listed right here in this playlist. It's one of my favorite playlists. So check it out and see if there are any, you know, skills you wanna go over and they'll be in there. But throughout all those videos, a common question I get asked a lot is how can I better instruct my students to actually encode or spell the phonics words that they're given, right? We're teaching all these phonics patterns, but maybe students aren't necessarily transferring those skills into their writing. So that's what this video is all about. So today I actually have three tips for you all about encoding words. And if you're ready to dive in, give this video a like, subscribe to my channel, and let's go. Now, I have also made a ton of writing videos here on my channel, and one of the most common uh, or popular things that I get asked about is my inventive spelling letter right here. And this is a letter that I send home to parents just letting them know what inventive or phonetic spelling actually is. But the question I get asked most from parents and teachers alike is, okay, so when are my students going to move past that inventive spelling? And when, you know, when is it a problem? And I always explain that it is my job as the teacher, I am spending a whole phonics block teaching students to encode and spell these words. And naturally, as my students learn all these different phonics patterns, they will naturally progress and add them to their writing. But they don't just do that out of nowhere. You have to have students actually practice encoding, spelling, writing those words down so that way they can transfer it to their writing in a natural progression. And naturally as K through two teachers, we are often so focused on having students decode and read these words that sometimes we forget to have them practice encode as well. So let's dive into these tips. Tip number one is you need to explicitly model encoding frequently. Whether you're doing this in whole group or small group phonics lessons, you want to actually model how to encode the new patterns and sounds you're learning. So for example, let's pretend you're in kindergarten and you are teaching the letter B and we're working on letter names and letter sounds. So you will want to model with your students. All right, everybody, I'm thinking of the sound B, B sound. What letter makes the sound B? That's a B. How can I write a B? Let me show you. And then you'll actually show them on the board. This way you are showing them that you're making that connection from sound to the letter, then to the actual physical writing of the letter. So just like I did there, as I write B on the board, they might have their own little board or writing paper that they can do it with you. And I would model maybe one or two of them explicitly, and then I would kind of pass the baton and let students practice that sound letter let me encode it, let me write it. And you can do this with whatever skill you're focusing on. So if you're a first grade teacher and you're working on, you know, add and at families, you would do the same thing, except you would say, okay, the sounds in the word k, a, p, sound it out first. What letters make that? C, A, P. Okay, let me write it down. K, C, A, A, P, P and write it. Now I also said you want to do this frequently. Encoding is not something that's just kind of like a bonus or an extension or thrown on at the end of a phonics lesson when you have time. You want to make sure you're planning this with your students so they have practice at least two to three times each week. Basically it should really be embedded in your phonics instruction. Tip number two for teaching encoding is to make sure you review previously taught sounds. Now a couple months back I did a video on common mistakes teachers make when teaching phonics right here one of my favorite videos, go check that out. But one of the mistakes is that we often forget to kind of spiral or review our old learning and students aren't getting enough exposure to it. So when you're practicing encoding, it's a great time to have students not just encode the new skills they're learning, but their old skills as well. Now in doing this with decoding, I shared in that video that I like to use a sheet that looks like this right here. And these are my one page decodable interventions. And at the top, you can see they are practicing and reviewing old sounds. Then they move down to the focus skill in just words before they go on to full sentences. And I do have a place down there for them to actually 
encode some words as well, but you can make your encoding practice even stronger by doing that scaffolding through encoding as well as just decoding. So for example, if your students are working on the add and at family, you might have students first practice writing the letter T. And again, you would do that by doing sound first. So sound, letter, write it. So you might ask students, okay, what letter makes the sound T? Can you write it down? And then they would go ahead, sound, T, write it down. Have them practice with a few letters. Then you'll go into some words. Can you write down the word had? Students will have to think of those sounds, ah, d, and write them down. What about the word bat? Have them practice a couple. Lastly, you can have them encode an actual sentence. Can you write the sentence, I had a bat? And they can practice writing it. Now they've already scaffolded those sounds, so they'll be better able to kind of pull from that knowledge, remember that knowledge, and write it down in sentence format. And tip number three to help students encode is to use sound boxes with new skills. Sound boxes are a great way for students to really make some phoneme connections and thinking about what sounds are in a word, but they're also a great way for them to make some phoneme and grapheme relationships to see what graphemes match each phoneme. So let me just show you quickly how I would do this for encoding. So all you'll need to do this are some sound boxes like here. I usually like to have sheets like this that have the sound boxes laminated. Um, this one right now is not, but this way you could do this over and over and not, you know, waste paper. Um, also when doing regular sound boxes, I often like to use Play-Doh, something they can squish, but counters will be more applicable here because I'm going to want students to actually write the grapheme inside the sound box. So for example, if you are doing the word had and you want your students to encode the word had, First, I will want them to identify the different phonemes. So we have ad. I might have them practice that a few times. And then when they do it, again, sound, letter, and then write. So that is an H. I can identify that and I will write it in the box. A. -a. So we have had. D, D, had, don't mind my messy handwriting, but now they're actually writing it within the box. So they're practicing encoding it and they're also seeing that each phoneme has its grapheme representation within the sound boxes. Then you could have students erase this word and do it again with a new word. So there you have three different tips for practicing encoding in your own classroom. So now I wanna know from you, which one of these tips are you going to try in your own classroom in the upcoming weeks? Let me know down in the comments. And I mentioned this earlier, but if you're looking for other phonics or phonemic awareness related videos, I have a whole playlist right here that I will also link down in the description so you can check those out. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Make sure you are subscribed to my channel and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.